Hello everyone, so today we'll be looking at coding, capacity and duration of memory. As always, I am following along with the AQA Psychology textbook for A-Level Year 1 in AS with the green-haired girl on. So the things you need to know and be able to recognise, I've included your specification point, which is short-term memory and long-term memory, features of each store, coding, capacity and duration. You need to know what is meant by coding capacity and duration, and you also need to know what is meant by short-term and long-term memory. Exam questions can also ask you to outline and evaluate research. That sometimes tricks students. It can come up anywhere. In terms of this, this is what the textbook does. It asks you to outline and evaluate research related to the features of short-term memory, coding, capacity, and duration. If this was to happen, your outline and evaluation should relate all to that particular research that you dis talk about, discuss in your answer. And then you must know that the features, the word features of memory, relates to coding, capacity, and duration. So we'll look at the definitions. What is coding, capacity and duration? Now, coding, think of that as the way it comes into your brain, the format in which information is stored in the memory system. Capacity, think of that in terms of amount, the amount of information that can be held in a memory store. And duration, meaning time, the length of time information can be held in memory. So we've now got research on coding. So this is a very well known study by Badley. So the conversion of information from one form to another is called coding. So by that we was like acoustic and semantic. So the research by Badley, what he does is there's four different groups. So group one gets acoustically similar words and that's words that sound similar to one another. You have group two which gets acoustically dissimilar, so words that sound different. Group three, which has semantically similar, so that's words with similar meanings. And group four, which gets semantically dissimilar, which is words that all have different meanings. So the yellow, which is group one, acoustically similar words. When participants were shown the words and had to recall them in the correct order immediately, so this is looking at short term memory recall, they tended to do worse with acoustically similar words. So that suggests to us that short-term memory is coded acoustically and group three semantically similar words so words with similar meanings if participants record the words after 20 minutes they did words with semantically similar words so therefore the information is coded semantically in long-term memory so i've jumped over here to the ao3 for artificial stimuli so we can criticize here Badley's research because all he was doing was using words the words don't have any meaning to people there's no personal meaning and we need to be cautious in terms of generalizing the findings we find from research like this in processing more meaningful material people may use different coding for short-term memory tasks so we know that short-term memory is acoustically coded but people may use semantic when they look at meaningful material so therefore we can argue it's got a limited application we also have research on capacity so this is your digit span and your span of memory and chunking so when we think of the digit span technique we need to think of jacobs from 1887 now this research was conducted a long time ago so in terms of testing someone's digit span the researcher would give you for example four digits and then you must recall each of the four digits in the correct order out loud. Now, if you do this correctly, the research will then read out five digits, which won't be the same as the first four you've just had. It'll all be different, so it's randomised each time. And when the participant can no longer recall the order correctly, that's their digit span. So what Jake has found was that the mean for digits was 9.3 items. And for letters, it was 7.3 items. So the span of memory and chunking, now this is Miller from 1956. That's the same year as Asher's research. Try and remember, 1956. So Miller made these observations that there are seven days of the week, seven notes in a musical scale. And so what he did, therefore, was so that we have this span, a capacity of short-term memory, which is about seven items plus or minus two. 
So Miller noted people can recall five words as well as they can five letters because what people are doing is using something called chunking and they're grouping units or chunks. So a limitation of Miller's research is that it lacks validity. So Miller conducted his research, that study in 1956, and the research in that time lacked vigorous control. So we have a lot more control in our studies nowadays than what we did back then. So some participants may have been distracted whilst they were being tested, and so they didn't perform as well as they might otherwise do so. And results may not actually be that valid due to confounding variables. So think of these as things that confuse the results in the study. But the results of this study have been supported, so it does support the validity of it. So you can sort of turn it on its head, that sort of evaluation point. So a further limitation is from Cohen. So I've put this in a P paragraph here. A limitation of research on capacity is that Miller may have overestimated it. For example, research by Cohen 2001 found that the capacity of short term memory is only about four chunks. This suggests that the lower end of Miller's estimate, five items, may be more appropriate than seven items. Therefore, as these findings contradict Miller's, it reduces the validity of his findings, which is a limitation of his research. Now, notice when I write short term memory, I then bracket it afterwards. You need to write it out in full first so the examiner knows what you're talking about. And also, when we mention validity, that term, we're meaning whether what we're testing what we intend to test. So what is short term memory and long term memory? You need to know these. So short term memory has a limited capacity store. It's mainly coded acoustically. So that's your sound average capacity of five to nine items. And the duration is between 18 and 30 seconds. Your long term memory is a permanent memory store. So coding is mainly semantic. So that's by meaning it has an unlimited capacity and can store memories for a lifetime. We now have research on duration. So we'll look at duration in terms of short term memory first. I've just pointed out here before we look at the study, it was conducted in a lab. So we know limitations of this. We have a high control over extraneous variables, but it lacks ecological validity. So Peterson and Peterson in 1959 tested 24 undergraduate students and each student took part in eight trials. And when we say a trial, we mean one time when a student was given a consonant syllable. So a trigram such as Y, C, G. Now, remember something students sometimes think that are included in these trigrams are vowels. You would never see a vowel. It's a consonant syllable, just to remind you, because sometimes students don't click on with that particular part. They had to count backwards from a number in threes until told to stop and say the trigram. So they might be told, okay, count from 100 backwards in threes, and then they just keep counting backwards. And what that does is it stops mental rehearsal of that trigram that they were given. And that stopping of when they could then say the trigram was either at three, six, nine, twelve, 15 or 18 seconds and this is known as the retention interval so the findings were that the longer the retention interval the worse the recall and this suggests that short time memory is very short unless we repeat something over and over again so we also have the duration of long term memory and this was Barrick and colleagues in 1975 who studied participants age between 17 and 74 so it was high school yearbooks that were obtained from some schools and there was two different tasks. So there was either photo recognition or free recall. Now the photo recognition test consisted of 50 photos and some were from their high school yearbooks, but some weren't. And the free recall was where the participants recalled the names of people in their graduating class. Now, when we look at the different accuracies and how many years after some students get confused with this because well the participants are aged between 17 and 74. Now I've had a look at the academic paper for this and in terms of 17 they were actually tested two weeks after so because that first one photo recognition within 15 years of graduation within 15 years so it could be two weeks after full weeks after but it was they were tested in terms of two weeks after up to 15 so within that time 
Um, so that's why people of the age of 17 can be included in the study. So photo recognition within 15 years of graduation, the participants were 90% accurate. Photo recognition after 48 years of graduation. So this was older participants and they were 70% accurate. And then free recall after 15 years, 60% accurate. And free recall after 48 years is 30%. So what we can say from that particular study is that long term memory is very long. Now, in terms of those studies that I've just outlined, which are your AO1 sort of information, which you would use if an essay did come up and you needed AO1 marks, you can always turn these into AO3 to say like it supports that long term memory is very long in terms of other spreads you can cross this over with. So for Peterson and Peterson, we have a limitation here because they're just using meaningless stimuli in their study, it's artificial, they're using trigrams. So memorizing consonant syllables are not reflective of everyday life. So there's this lack of external validity. But what we do try to do is remember some irrelevant things like phone numbers. So it's not exactly a totally irrelevant study. We also have higher external validity, which is a strength of the Barrack study that we've just had a look at. So Barrack et al. study used meaningful memories, so high school yearbooks, they have high external validity. When research has been conducted using meaningless pictures by Shepard in 1967, recall rates tend to be lower. So we've got brilliant support here because we're thinking, yeah, recall rates are higher because we've got more meaningful memories, but actually, there could be confirming variables involved, confusing things, meaning that the results look different to what they should be, because participants may have looked back over their high school yearbooks over many years and therefore rehearsed their memory in terms of the pictures. So we also have criticising Peterson and Peterson. So one explanation of why we forget is because of our memory trace, which is the record we have of a memory, which disappears if it's not rehearsed because of this thing called spontaneous decay. It disappears if there's no external cause. The information may be displaced in short term memory because new information pushes out the current information. In Peterson and Peterson's study, participants are counting down during that retention interval. So what that may have done is push out, so displaced, the consonant syllables from short term memory. And that is because short term memory has this limited capacity. Now, Peterson and Peterson believe their findings were due to decay of consonant syllables, but it is possible that the findings were due to displacement. And hence, they were actually investigating the limited capacity of short term memory. Exam advice I have for you now. So you may be asked to identify differences between short term memory and long term memory. So you need to think about the features here. So coding capacity and duration. So you must compare short term memory and long term memory by feature and not by memory store. So here we have a table that you might like to copy or write down somewhere because this can be useful if you get a differences between short term memory and long term memory. So you want to compare by these features, which are your coding capacity and duration, as opposed to your store, your memory store. OK, so exam questions. This is from an A level paper one from June 2017. So in an investigation into memory, participants were presented with two different lists of words. So you've got your list A, your list B there. After seeing the list, participants were tested on their ability to recall the words. When tested immediately, participants found it more difficult to recall the words from list A in the correct order. If you look at them, they're all acoustically similar, so they would find that more difficult. When tested after 30 minutes, participants found it more difficult to recall the words from list B in the correct order. You see that they're all semantically similar, so that would find be to be more difficult in terms of long term memory. So here we have using your knowledge of coding in memory, explain these findings right around the side if you find that helps with this. So here we have the mark scheme. It is all AO2 marks. There we are. The immediate task that was your acoustically similar sound of similar words and your delayed task is your semantically similar. Have a look at those points that are being made because you need to make sure you're getting two for each. Okay, thank you for listening and good luck with the rest of your revision.